So I want to bring in uh, Dr. Shiva Ayadurai. He's an MIT-trained scientist with expertise in biological engineering. I'm going to read to you the latest as it's crossing the wires now, and that is that, again, I'm going to read this to you. You tell me how important this is or isn't. The virus shows signs of spreading overseas with people who never visited China falling ill in Germany, Japan, Taiwan, and Vietnam. That's the very latest on this. Does that concern you, sir? Well, you know, one of the interesting things is uh, there's a, two parts, right, symptomatic and asymptomatic. Uh, some people may have traveled there, and, you know, it, the current number on the incubation period is 2 to 10 days, and people may have come back to these countries. Hmm. And in an asymptomatic model, someone may not show symptoms, but, uh, but they may be a carrier. So that's what's uh, not clear with this virus, whether it's asymptomatic you know, or symptomatic. Some viruses, uh, someone doesn't show anything. They could have traveled to China, come around, walked around a big mall, and someone else gets it, but they could be a carrier. Um, I so, think the so interesting just, thing just so, with this just, vi just so I understand what you just said, because the report says these people in these countries never visited China. You're saying somebody else did and gave it to them. Right. So, so the thing is, you know, uh, viruses have uh, typically an incubation period of zero. In this case, they don't know what the incubation period is from the scientific literature. I've been tracking very closely. Right. Uh, some people say it's six to eight days. Other people say it's two to ten days. So let's say you traveled to China uh, ten days ago. Right. Um, you may have you may have it, but you may uh, not show any symptoms. It's a base of uh, uh, fundamentally a base basis of your strength of your immune system, right? Your immune system may have fought it, uh, and you may absolutely be fine, but you may be a carrier of it. And you could be walking around a mall, a shopping place, and someone else who has a weaker immune system or an immune system that has a proclivity to that may get it. So just because that individual did not travel does, that, does not mean that someone in that vicinity had not traveled to China. Would you put in perspective for us, because we're such laymen and we don't understand this type of science, and we also tend to trust, as Americans, the real smart people will figure this out. It's not going to become a huge problem. I think that's the way most Americans tend to think about these types of things. Are we right or are we wrong? And if so, how are we wrong? Well, well, I think it's all relative, right? So if you look at broadly, right, mm -hmm. at infectious diseases from a, a broad perspective, um, and I think it's good to look at this in context, uh, you know, between 1900 to 1953, uh, uh, the level of infectious diseases were nearly wiped out relatively. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that, and that was because of sanitation, uh, refrigeration, uh, hygiene, nutrition, vitamin A, mm -hmm. these kinds of things strengthen people's immune system. So by the time, for example, the United States, the measles vaccine was developed in 1963, 98% 90, had been wiped out because of that infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at a, a place like China, you know, the infrastructure, it's still a developing nation, infrastructure still building, um, and you have a much more proclivity of people getting these infectious diseases. So that's something that needs to be understood, that chi the Chinese uh, development and the infrastructure is fundamentally a cause, uh, as a basis of a cause for these viruses and people getting them. Wait, wait. Uh, one of the things we need to remember is, you know, vitamin A is something extremely valuable for building the cell walls and the cell membranes of immune systems. So if you have these kinds of deficiencies, a certain population is going to get it. But and just to put this in perspective, when you look at SARS, you know, SARS had a mortality rate. I think it's about 5,000 people were infected, uh, 5,300 people. It had a mortality rate around 10 percent. Uh, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which is a variation of SARS, had a, had a uh, you know, mortality rate of 30 percent. Right now, I think the latest numbers are that I just tracked a couple of uh, minutes ago was 7,700 and about 4%, 170 people, uh, you know, have been, uh, you mm. know, ha have had a mortality. So I think when you look at this, we need to put this in perspective. You know, to a population of 11 million people, uh, in some ways the flu in the United States kills a lot more people. So uh, to me it's interesting to see how the media focuses on certain things and not on other things. Yeah, that's good. And I think that perspective is really important. And you're a really smart guy, and we thank you for being able to put it in perspective for us and, and uh, take, take us through this. Uh, Dr. Shiva Ayudurai, we, we, we thank you once again for your time, sir.